I want to show you how you can use Excel and a Monte Carlo type simulation to value a call and a put option when it expires. Now, for the call option at expiration, it's going to be the maximum of the stock price minus the exercise price, or zero. That is, if it's in the money, the stock price is above the exercise price. Remember, for a call option, you can buy at the exercise price, you can sell, you can sell it at whatever the current stock price is. If this is positive, then it has value. If it's negative, then it's just zero. You just throw away the option. In the case of a put option, you're selling at the exercise price and you're buying at S. So it's in the money if the exercise price exceeds the stock price. So if the stock price is greater than the exercise price, then you just throw it away. If the exercise price is greater than the stock price, then the value of the put is the exercise price or the sell price minus the buy price of S. So I've got some data here. Um, stock price of 50, exercise price of 50. Um, I'm going to assume an annual return of 10% and I'm going to assume volatility is 20%. That is the return on the stock is, or the standard deviation of the return is 20%. So let's assume that the current date is August 1st of 2023 and that the maturity date is December 1st of uh, 2023. So we want to convert all of these into the correct um, periods. So the time in years is going to be equal to the maturity date minus the current date or the start date divided by 365. So it's about a third of a year. The period return is going to be equal to 1 plus the annual return, which is 10%, raised to the power of um, the number of years or the fraction of the year for this uh, option before the option expires minus 1. Okay, so 3.24 percent. And the period volatility is going to be equal to the annual volatility times the square root of time, which again is 0.33425. Alright, so what we want to do here is rather than just assume that you're always going to earn 3% in your return, sometimes you're going to earn more, sometimes you're going to earn less. So you can do a bunch of replications here. Now, normally you do 1,000 or 10,000, you could even do 100,000. I'm just going to do 100 replications. It just makes the spreadsheet a little less uh, uh, unwieldy. So here I'm going to fill this in. I'm going to go down to 100. So I could type in 1 and 2 or 1, you know, uh, cell B18 plus 1 and then copy it down. But you can also use this function here right under the summation function. There's a series and you can fill it in. It's a column. It starts at 1. We're going to stop at 100. And that fills it in for us there. So what we want to do is we want to find the return each period randomly based on this period expected return and this standard deviation. And there actually happens to be a function in Excel that will do this for us. It's called norm.inv and what you do is you put in some probability, a value between 0 and 1, but we want that to change. So if I put in 50% or something, you get all the same values. So I'm going to put in a function called RND, random. It's going to generate a random variable, um, uniform variable, between 0 and 1. And if I just put in 
open parenthesis, close parenthesis, it's going to change each time. The mean is 3.24%, and the standard deviation is um, here. And let me put a dollar sign in front of this, and a dollar sign in front of this, because I'm going to copy the formula down, and I want to make sure that, you know, we stay with these two functions. So I'm going to copy this down. And you can see I get I get different values. I get different returns. Let's uh, let's make that uh, these percentage returns, and we'll just kick that out. So sometimes you have negative returns, sometimes you have high positive returns. It varies. So. What's the price of the stock going to be? The price is going to be $50, the current stock price, times 1 plus that re the return for that period. So let's put that in here. Equals, and we're going to hit stock price, and I'm going to hit the F4 key. I forgot to do it last time. That'll lock the cell, so when I copy it down, it stays at C3 times 1 plus, and we're not going to lock this cell because we want it to change each period. And you can see every time I hit return or I do some calculation, these values change. So I'm going to copy this down. See, so we get different, we're going to get diff different stock prices at expiration. Okay, you'll notice that sometimes they're above 50, right? The strike price or the exercise price is 50. That's the X here so that sometimes the, the call option in the money and sometimes it's out of the money the stock price is below 50. So let's put in this formula in for the value of the long call. Okay, maximum of the stock price which is here minus this exercise price and again, I'll hit that F4 key, or zero. Okay, so in this case, it's zero. It's out of the money. Let's copy that down. Let's see what we get. You can, you can see sometimes they're out of the money. Sometimes the stock price has gone up. It's in the money. So you get different values for the call. We're going to do the same thing for the put option. This is going to be equals the exercise price, or the maximum of the exercise price, which is here. Again, lock that cell, minus the stock price, or zero. And you can see that when the call is in the money, the put is out of the money. And I'm going to copy this all the way down as well. Now let me expand this. Okay, so let's value this. Let's figure out what the average value is. So I'm just going to average the call, all those values. I get 335. I can just copy the formula over to the put, and it will average this column here. And I get $1.70. So you can see you get different values for what the put and the call are expected to be. Let's see if this is correct. If we raise the stock price, we would expect the call option to go up in value, the put option to go down in value. So let's make this $55. That's in fact what we saw. Let's go back to our 50. If we lower the exercise price, or actually let's raise the exercise price. If we raise the exercise price, that should make the put more valuable, the call less valuable. 
And in fact, that's what we see hap happens here. How about if we um, increase the volatility? Increase volatility should increase the value for both the put and the call. So let's increase the volatility to 30%. And you see the values, or the average values, go up. So I hope this shows you that you can actually use Excel to um, create a Monte Carlo simulation that gives you a little more realism in terms of valuing an option, as long as you know the, um, the expected return on the stock and the standard deviation.